morning, Vinyl Community. What up? It's an early, pretty early morning here. Another lovely fall morning. Listening to some ambient guitar music. And that's what this, uh, that's what this feature is going to be about. Something I wanted to, I've been compiling for a couple months. It's been a lot of what my listening in 2023 has been summer. Just kind of been what the mood has been. So what is going on with this? Yeah, this is primarily ambient music made entirely with guitars or a guitar, solo guitar, if you will. In times it is heavily processed at times. Yeah, we're not talking about, you know, acoustic music or American primitive here. In any case, um, there's some old ones here that I feel like are foundational. And then we'll get into the modern stuff. And uh, I'll tell you what we're listening to when I get to it. I hope everyone's great recording this prior to the WFMU Record Fair, October 14th, 15th. So I'm not sure when you'll see this, probably just before that. Evening Star for you know, a foundational piece of music, uh, as well as with no pussyfooting, of course. This is the Polydor UK pressing. The EG edition, by the way, don't, I, I, I encourage you to steer clear of the uh, Eno's EG US pressings of these. Same with all the Eno records. Don't find, not a fan of those pressings. But this uh, UK Polydor is great. And this was from 75, I think a couple years after uh, No Pussy Footing, 1975. If you don't know, it's Robert Fripp playing guitar. Um, sort of improv improvisations while Brian Eno plays the tape machine essentially taking in and recording the guitar and then looping it back in a, in a processed way so that it sort of degrades and um, it changes the, the texture and quality of it this is four tracks a lot of people prefer this one to No Pussy Footing I think they're both absolutely essential and you know this to me influenced all kinds of bands to take the guitar and do more with it. Create textures, create feelings. So, a key record for that kind of sound. Ambient guitar. This just got a reissue, an official reissue with the die, with the original cover. This is an Italian pressing on PDU without the fold-out cover, but still gonna be quite valuable. Unfortunately, my, I may, I may, I, this is something I will be looking to upgrade this year, if you know what I'm saying. But it's the first Astro Temple from 1970. Again, this is a repressing from the late 70s. 1976 on that PDU label. The record's nice. This is known as a crowd rock classic, but really, there's a ton of atmosphere and Manuel Gotching, who's, what an important figure in well, in music, but in what he would do with the guitar. Um, later with E2, E4, uh, his, his inventions record under his own name, but the first Astro Temple, of course, with Klaus Schulze, drums, percussion, Hartmut Anke, bass, and uh, recorded by Connie Plank. You know, a lot of what this is, it's just tapestries of sound, and it eventually does work its way up but this is a patient record, and, and, and an ambient type of guitar record, I think. They weren't calling it that then, but um, Asher Temple's first. A cr yeah, a crowd rock record, but clearly they were in their own sort of element and doing their own thing. A lot of crowd rock bands. Um, no one sounded quite the same. They were all sort of doing their own little take on experimental music at the time. Here's another one. This also this is from the late '70s originally. I've shown this before. Absolutely key in the sound, kind of similar to what Frippino were doing in that um, creating um, collages. Dontra Schickard's Schubafolk on the Great Sky label. He was never really in any bands, I don't think, but he had a pretty early one. Private Press, which Brain reissued as a Green Brain, which I have too. Um, uh, Samti Vogel. But from 77. I absolutely love this one. It's beautiful. There's lots of like um, 
nature and sort of like um, it's a little bit of vocal, but it's like it's just part of this the palette of segments he's using. And with Gunter Sugar, and this is not too expensive. I mean, it used to not be um, original German pressing on Sky. You can find it. Bureau B did a reissue too. But it's multi-track. It's it's again that sort of collage he's making. He's making a framework of just beautiful sound. And it's strange, it's got elements of sort of noise to it. But very much coming from that, what would become an ambient school, I think. Um, it's just four tracks. Yeah. Yeah, very cool guitar player. These are the kind of guitarists that I personally am most influenced by. Ones that are sort of broadening what you can do with a guitar, not so much sort of living in the same, you know, worn pathways of what the guitar does, playing blues licks. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> Everyone should like what they like. But for me, I like to see what the guitar can do, um, how it can be processed and sort of mutated. Gunter Schickert, Uber Folding. And now we'll get into some other ambient guitar records, some more modern stuff, coffee time. I'm trying to be a little bit on the soft side. up yet. That's what I'm getting at. So this is what we're listening to. Carl Holtgren. Who is Carl Holtgren? But signed by him on the back too. One half of Windy and Carl, the great uh, Michigan drone experimental duo who I find to be key players in this sort of um, cosmic guitar sound that I like so much. And he's basically the one responsible for this sound. Wendy does a lot of the vocals and the bass sir drones. But this is his only record under his own name. You can get this on the Wendy and Carl Bankhead site right now for like 20 bucks. It's super good. It's from 2014 on their own Blue Flea label. Wendy and Carl, I've been, I had been into for many years ago and only had a couple of records and this year I've been all in on them. Um, still a few I need. But anyway, guitars, percussion, keyboards, and Home Sounds by Carl Holdgren, recorded 2011 to January 2013. Um, yeah, they're from the, um, what, Dearborn area of Michigan, I believe it is. They had their own label. I'll talk about more of them in a second, but this is Carl Holdgren, you know, partner of Wendy, Wendy Weber, double LP on Blue Fleet. Just this gorgeous stuff that you're hearing right now. Is there a title for this record? Oh yeah, Tomorrow. It's called Tomorrow. And this band has been making music since the early 90s. Uh, highly worth checking them out. Wendy and Carl, it's Carl Holtgren. Check, I'm going to link to the Bandcamp site if anyone wants this. You can grab it right now. It's a beautiful album. Double LP. I highly recommend it. And here now, one of the records I most was looking for this year. I'm going to show this again in the Show Your Sets video I'm going to do for James Buttery. But I want to show the sets and show the series of the Bliss Out series, Darla, the San Francisco label that was basically taking indie bands and saying, hey, send us, be a part of our ambient series in a sense, and that's what this is. And this is Wendy and Carl's version, Antarctica, maybe probably their best record. Um, from, what is it, 96? I forget, 96, 97, 98 years, not in front of me, but. Now this one. is on the Bliss Out series, as I mentioned. And it is just absolutely sublime. Sort of a drone ambient, but all done with guitars. And it's, it's volume two in the, in the Bliss Out series, Antarctica. A little, real quick, I, I, I was getting into re-entering their world, and this record I saw was kind of on the expensive side. I was waiting for it to come down, no new copies, all of a sudden the copies started disappearing. And <laughs> I started getting like, oh my god. I ended up buying the last available copy in Europe. Was it Germany? I forget, it, Germany or the Netherlands. And it was more than it had sold for yet. Not 
it wasn't like someone asking ten times, but it was like, okay, now I'm going to be spending way more than I could have for copies that were in the U.S. that are now gone. I decided, you know what, I may never see it again. And sure enough, no copies have been listed since I bought this in June. So, that's one of the cases where I don't feel too bad paying up for it. But I absolutely do not mind because this is a special record. The first, intro, the first track, Antarctica, will just absolutely floor you. The bass drone on that, and then the Carl Holtgren's guitar. It's just pristine and beautiful. But it's not so beautiful. It's actually gritty, kind of. And, um, like I said, it is a droning noise element to it, too. But it's just spectacular music. We need Carl's Antarctica. Volume 2, right? Yeah, Volume 2 in the Bliss Out series, which I'm going to show, do a feature on for James Buttery. Another key artist over the last 15 years is Grouper. Liz Harris, out of Portland, Oregon. And um, she's slowly kind of taken her sound into other realms, I think. But it's early on, it was always her guitar in a heavily effective way huge pedals um, and that's what this one is cover the windows and the walls this is from uh, 2006 although it tells you the pressings on the back first press 2007 second press 2009 third press 2012 that's what this is but this is even now tough to get and it's on the bootstrata label and it's just her and her, all of her music all of her sleeve design is always super um, oblique the side of the insert. Maybe not. Anyway, like there's the dreaming, dream, uh, dream loss and AI dream loss. I think it is, but you can hardly tell what they are. But she does all of her own silk screen covers, and it's tracks like "Open Space," "Down to the Ocean," "Heart Current," "Cover the Windows and the Walls." I mean, it's all this sort of blissed out, heavily sort of layered droning beauty. All guitar. At least I think. She doesn't say here. But this is on her, um, it's on the Root Strata label. She also does Yellow Electric. That's her label. If you're into her, you, you gotta sign up for her band camp. And so you can get her records when they get announced. They go, they go out within a day, if not less. Michael Muller knows what I'm talking about. I've seen Mazzy show some of the grouper. I know he's a fan. It's just wonderful. I love Liz Harris, and she has tons of other projects too. Um, Rome comes to mind. Uh, I can't, I'm spacing on it, but anyway. Ambient guitar music of the highest order. And here's one that will be more of a band sound, but we gotta talk about Flying Saucer Attack. This is Chorus from 1985 on Drag City, Domino in the UK. I have David Pierce just making shards of feedbacky guitar ambience but this has got drums of course and other stuff going on but it's it's primarily what he does with the guitar and it's a lo-fi edge to this for sure I, I highly I mean you can't really go wrong with any of the flying saucer attack records you know out of Bristol that great Bristol sound that's been discussed and this is a track on here called Pulpal Vu 3 so that gives you an idea what you're getting into. I should probably have shown Pulpo Vula as a foundational ambient guitar sound, which I have that box set I still gotta dig back into. Let's just say that I, I recognize Pulpo Vula. I recognize them. Beautiful band, but chorus. And yeah, there's a track on here called Their Dub, and there's a sort of dub element sometimes to this heavily processed ambient guitar sound. Love it. All right, here's one I know Stuntia will approve of, if not others. He just played this on one of his streams. Inspired me to pull it out and add it to this. It's a transparent radiation 12-inch EP. It's really more of an LP with the length of it. There's a few different issues with this. I don't think this is the very first, but it is one of them. And I'm going to play some music by Grouper now cover the windows and the walls. This record 
originally from the late 80s, and I want to talk about it because of a few tracks that are included. The Ecstasy Symphony and the flashback rendition of Transparent Radiation. Tracks 2 and 3 on this first side are absolutely godly. And it's, it is interesting that this is a band that's sort of focused on repetitive droning guitar and psychedelia. But they would start sort of doing their own kind of beautiful, beautiful sound. It's primarily guitars that they're doing it with, you know, I'm sure they're synthesizers at times, but I just, I like the aspect of the simplicity of just taking the guitar into unknown lands. If you don't know, let's see. Sonic Boom guitar feedback and vocals, of course, Jason Pierce, or I'm sorry, Sonic Boom Pete Kember. Jason guitar, Farfisa vocals, so there is Farfisa. The bass man is doing bass vibrations, I believe that was, um, mm, the, the bass player in this band rotated forgetting his name, and uh, Roscoe, percussion, but you have covers on this, Transparent Radiation is of course the Red Crayola, Ecstasy Symphony is their own piece, which I had said is beautiful, the flashback rendition of Transparent Radiation, need to hear that, um, then you have Things Will Never Be The Same, their own track, which is awesome, and then the blown out version of Starship, MC5 Sun Ra edition. Transparent Radiation, 12 inch, um, a beauty. So, here's a band coming up here, as we get more, this is like 10 to 12 records here total. A lot of their best records are on K, the K label out of Olympia, Washington, but not a lot of vinyl on those. They're still around and making vinyl records on their new stuff now, which I don't have much of, but this is Landing a um, ambient guitar band out of the Pacific Northwest. This is called Sphere. This was like five dollars back in the day. I think people are starting to look for these landing records now, so I recommend checking it out. Um, they have a few that I have on CD only. Seasons is one I'd love to see. Um, yeah, but this is landing. Um, the guitar sound on this is it's not as like heavily processed as Wendy and Carla Grouper and sort of atmospheric it's more sort of a little more sort of direct but just like a lot of reverb and delay on the guitars like very relaxing I find and a little bit of you know psychedelia in terms of getting a little far out and there's um, yeah drums on this as well landing sphere. The year on this one is oh, probably the late 90s again. That's when I, well I've been listening to them since then I got the record a little bit after. You can find it. We, we get obsessed with the years, don't we? We're always like, what's the fucking year? <laughs> anyway, landing sphere on K. You know K. Here's the only record I have by this art. No, not true. I do have some others, but this is an early one on the the great label Type, a UK label that I don't think is maybe still around, but they're not doing as much as they used to. But this is Love Is a Stream by Jeffrey Cantu Ledesma, who also runs the Root Strata label I talked about earlier. Um, Ledesma started doing this project in 2010, and yeah, Type Records. I think Type Records. Have a lot of t there's some grouper stuff on type and a lot of more experimental a little bit of electronic I have, I have a bunch of stuff on type this one is is love is a stream this is like super blissed out and definitely gets into somewhat of a um abstract territory there's other things on here other than guitar but there is the guitar as a primary instrument Yeah, it says here, all music by Jeffrey Conto Ledesma, performed on electric guitar, Roland Juno 60, classic Roland, and effects. And some vocals by Lisa McGee. Additional analog processing by the Norman Conquest. Hmm. 2010, Love is a Stream. Uh, this is not in print or anything. I don't know if it's been repressed. Repressed, we're all a little repressed, a little bit. No. 
Try not to be. There's my cat. We're enjoying the crickets again. Love is a stream by Jeffrey Cantula Desma. A few more. We have to talk about Roy Montgomery, the great guitarist out of New Zealand, who was in a bunch of bands, including the Pin Group. And um, he started making his own guitar, solo guitar music in the early 90s. And this is maybe not his first, but it's his most acclaimed. I absolutely love it. It seems from the South Island. This is a reissue. It's a double LP, 16 minutes running time. Um, from, what is it, 95. It's from 1995. He started doing this stuff, though, earlier. Most of this material is recorded on a Tascam Porta 1-4 track uh, tape recorder in New York. Between 94 and 95, he did move to New York City. Um, and then... Mix and Master in Chicago, March 95. Yeah, it was, and some of it was recorded in Christchurch, New Zealand. But this is the Yellow Electric reissue, Liz Harris's label. Um, that was a couple of years old now. It's a stunner. He's, I think, influenced Liz Harris for sure. Great sleeve design. Um, I gotta pull this out and listen to it again. I, I think with, with, um, I think so much Gogo in here. With Montgomery, you do have to check out some of his records are better than others, but what he does with guitar is special. Uh, this is Scenes from the South Island from mid-90s. Reissued, I think, two or three years ago on Yellow Electric. I don't know if you can get that anymore. Is this... This might be crazy splatter. Yeah, yeah, I don't really like this. Maybe as a black vinyl version that's cheap, I don't know. But he, he definitely likes to overlay, over, um, overdub layers of sound and sort of shards of sound with what he does with the guitar. And again, it's that ambient beauty that, that you, can, you can get to with the right pedals and the right amps and everything. But I think it just requires a real sense of exp exploration and the willingness to sort of be patient with what you do and, and you know reproducing a lot of this stuff probably isn't easy if they're playing live but who cares you get, the, you get this thing on tape tape the way you hear it uh, no this is probably digital recorded well no that's not true it's a task game but a lot of these are probably this is stuff from like the early 2010s probably digitally recorded in any case look up Roy Montgomery I'm sure a lot of you are onto him um, see if you can find scenes from the South Island and here's another one, and I, I, very important one, really, because he very much was focused on guitar. And he's got a lot of other records that are a lot of CD only that I, I'd like to get into. But Drag City did these Raphael Toral records, and these were tape, I'm sorry, CD only from the mid 90s. This one is Sound Mind, Sound Body, double LP, um, made up of pieces recorded from 87 through about 92 here. And it's all in the like, electric guitar except for a few tracks that he uses bass and sampler, but he's from Lisbon, Portugal, um, and was focused on making guitar music with his, I'm sorry, was focused on making sort of uh, atmospheric music with guitar. And uh, yeah, nice inner sleeves on this. I've shown this one before, but there's a whole a lot of background notes on this in there. Raphael Toral um, rebooted the ambient music paradigm with which had started strong to Eno's mid-70s work, but had been diluted by the New Age upsurge of the 1980s. This is the 30th anniversary. That's important to mention. I don't really... I like New Age music, some of it anyway. But this stuff, it can start getting into that territory if it's too sort of clean, so... That's why I do appreciate, like, the grouper, like, stuff, a little bit of grit on it. This has got vocals. Who the hell knows what she's saying, but whatever, it's all part of the field of sound. And Toral is part of that too. He doesn't do vocals, but it's stranger. Like a lot of this music is strange. Ambient guitar music, and it's just of its own variety, you know. Um, this you can get right away. This is cut by Rashad Becker, by the way. Mastered and cut by Mr. Rashad Becker. Pre-mastered at Noise Precision Regatta, but it's from the 90s. Rafael Toral out of Portugal. I hope that was fun. 
if anyone wants to respond to this, I know there's tons of stuff that I probably even have that I didn't consider, but this is sort of what I, what came to me thinking about this theme and what I've been listening to in 2023. And I'm sure there's more stuff in Europe that I'm not including. Um, I don't know, would like to know. So feel free to respond in some way or in the comments. Or make your own video, I don't know. But yeah, I love this sound. I'll be listening to it for the rest of the day probably. So um, that's going to do it. More to come. I've got a new vial in my life to do. I've got a bunch of good stuff that's come in. And I hope you are all well. And I'll see you in New York. <laughs>